Uh, one other interesting person that um, I remember was a fellow by the name of Red Wolf. I don't know what his real name was, but he went by Red Wolf. And he lived down in the Grand Canyon, he and his dog. And they would come out of the canyon, he would come out of the canyon, he and his dog, maybe once a year during the summertime, or sometimes maybe once every other year. And I remember him coming here to the Jacob Lake maybe three times during the time I was here. And he was, I don't know what his nationality was. I think he was probably part Indian and maybe some other, some other language. He wasn't a very tall man. He was just a, a short fellow with a long beard that went down almost to his stomach and knees. And his hair was down below his shoulders and you could smell him coming. I don't think he bathed. It. I don't know if he ever, ever bathed, but he probably probably was offered to shower here by Uncle Harold or somebody occasionally. But anyway, he he was um, he only had two or three teeth is all, and they were they were um, I think there were two on the top and maybe one on the bottom. <laughs> There's no way that he could eat meat, I don't think, and, or anything he had to chew. But he, he'd come and sit by the station, and, and he, uh, was, he, he looked like he was 90 years old. I don't know how old he was. He's probably somewhere in his 50s or 60s, but he was wrinkled, and he was dark brown, and, and he would sit there, and people, the tourists would stop to get gasoline or stop at the station, and they'd see Red Wolf sitting there. They'd all want to go take a picture of him because he was such a character-looking person. And he told me one time about a band of miniature horses that were down in the Grand Canyon. And I had no way of knowing whether this is a fantasy or a truth, but I remember he said that there was a certain plant that they would eat down there, the horses grazed on, that stunt their growth, and they would only grow some, I don't know, it seems like it was maybe 24 inches high at the, the most, and they were more like coyotes or dogs, but they were horses. I remember Red Wolf, I don't know whatever happened to him or how he ever got there or where he ever went. He, um, anyway, he was an interesting person now that became a tourist attraction whenever he happened to come out of the canyon. And he'd hang around for a week or two and he was kind of a friend of Uncle Billy's. He would talk to Uncle Billy, and, but he, he was not very well educated, uh, but he was a fun guy to talk to, a real character. So that was another interesting person. One other item. My aunt and uncle, <clears throat> Uncle Harold and Aunt Nina, used to take a vacation once a year. And they went to some neat places. They would travel to San Francisco, for example. One year they stopped and picked up our family in Ordway, Colorado, and took us with them to the 1939 World's Fair. Or maybe it's 41, I don't remember. Anyway, we went to the World's Fair, and um, we went with, with Uncle Harold and Aunt Nina. And they used to pay our way mostly in those days, we were still in the Depression and people didn't have much money. But Aunt Nina and Uncle Harold always had money to go travel with, and they got their money from a one-armed bandit or 
a slot machine that was a nickel slot machine that was inside the lobby where you come into the into the uh, where you come into the lodge. Now, you would think it'd take an awful lot of money to take vacations to San Francisco, Chicago, New York, and it did. But they used the money that that slot machine made for them during the year. At night, it would save all the nickels that that yielded. And there would be enough money there to buy gasoline and pay for hotel rooms at least once a year to take a vacation. That taught me that you can't beat a slot machine if that made enough money to pay for their vacation every year, somebody was losing a lot of money over the years by putting nickels in a one-armed bandit. <laughs>